Hi there. What you can see in front of you on the screen here on the left is uh, a copy of a remarkable paper that we're going to discuss in lectures that relates the amount of chocolate consumption across different countries with the number of Nobel Prizes won by inhabitants of those countries. Uh, we're going to see a scatter plot that looks like this implying that those countries where the inhabitants eat more chocolate across the x-axis here correspond to those countries which win more Nobel Prizes up the, the y-axis here. Correlation of plus 0.79 which is significant at any of our significance levels that we would normally choose. That's a remarkable result and it's interpreted in this paper as suggesting that eating lots of chocolate improves your cognitive function and as a result uh, leads to more intelligent inhabitants in each of these countries. We will talk about that in lectures. All that we're going to do in this video, so let's leave aside the interpretation of this result, we will discuss that later, all we want to do in this video is to look at the data that lies behind this paper. In fact, this is over here on the on the right is an Excel spreadsheet, which has some updated versions of the data that's used in in this paper. And so I've gone and collected this and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. So it's very common in practice, um, in your studies, in your workplace, whatever it is, that you'll be confronted with some data in an Excel spreadsheet like this, and need to do some analysis in it. So one of the basic skills that we need to develop is getting that data from Excel into R, our Econometrics software. So that's what we're going to do here. Take a look at this spreadsheet. So I've done a little bit of work already setting this up. What we have is a total of 21 countries. Okay, here they are here. 21 countries with the names listed. In the first row, you'll notice we have country and then we have Choc per capita. This is the chocolate consumption per capita for each of these countries measured in kilograms per person per year. Okay, so 11.9 for Switzerland, 2.5 for Brazil, and a whole range of values in between. We also have population, which we might use at a later date. We're not going to use that straight away. That's measured in millions of people. And then we have the Nobel laureates, which is measured the same way as in this paper. The number of Nobel laureates per 10 million people in each of these countries. Okay, and then we also have another couple of variables here that we'll use uh, in uh, a later lecture on GDP and per capita GDP, measuring the essentially the wealth or the productivity of these countries. Uh, from our perspective, the important thing about this spreadsheet is that it has the variable names across the top row, and it's good practice to do this. So when you set up a spreadsheet with your data in it, you should give it enough information so that when you go back and look at your spreadsheet in another week or another month or whatever it is, then you can remember what these things are. If you don't have these variable names or some kind of explanation in your spreadsheet, and if that, was, if that were not there and you came back and looked at this spreadsheet, you would have no idea what those numbers meant anymore. Now, in addition to that, just for your own benefit, we will use the top row of this spreadsheet to represent the variable names when we read this data into R. Okay, so we're going to read in a total of six variables called country, choc per capita, uh, choc per cap, popular, pop, nobels, GDP, GDP per cap. Okay, so this top row will contain variable names and that will be the case in all of the spreadsheets that we deal with in this subject. And it's good practice to do this as well. In R, variable name uh, restrictions um, are pretty much non-existent other than make sure whatever you put into these cells to represent the, the, uh, the variable names don't include any spaces. Okay, so if you wanted to put in a variable name such as chalk per cap, don't put spaces in between those words. Otherwise you can call these variables pretty much what you like. Call them something that makes sense to you and it's not too long because you're going to type these names again once we get this data into R. All right, now we can take the first step in shifting this data into R. This is an Excel spreadsheet. 
have a look at the, the file name here, Chalk versus Nobels, dot .xlsx, that tells you it's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, R can read Excel spreadsheets, but you've got to kind of download an extra package, and we're not going to do that straight away. What we're going to do instead is to first save this Excel spreadsheet into a different format that R can read very easily and it's called a comma separated values spreadsheet. It's going to look basically the same as what we've already got but Excel can read this. Okay, so you go, uh, so R can read this. So you go to save as, change the file type to CSV like this. You can leave the file name the same and put it in whatever directory you like. I'm just putting it in a directory associated with this particular video that I'm making right now. So we'll save that. And you'll get these warnings. Okay, do you want to continue? This workbook contains features that will not work, etc., etc. Your answer to this is continue. Okay. And we now have the same information. You can see nothing is actually lost from our perspective, but we now have a .csv file. And this is what we need to read this data into R. All right. So, job done. Now let's open up R Studio. There it is. So this is our R Studio window. When you first open it up, it'll look something like this. Uh, your window might not look exactly like this because I've moved around a few of these windows, but you'll see something that looks roughly like this. Uh, you should be able to inf uh, find little windows such as environment, which is currently empty because we don't have any data yet. Uh, history, which is currently empty because we haven't done anything yet. And files. Find the files tab. Uh, this is where we want to start. So in this files tab you will see that it gives you a list of all the folders or directories on your computer. And you can just click through these to find that CSV file that we just wrote out before. Okay, so under video 1 in my case. And there it is, that's what we just did. We created that chalk versus nobels.csv. Now before we do anything with that Let's just go to this More tab up here, this More button, and click on that. And having navigated to the directory where we want to work, we are going to set that as the working directory. So in most cases, this will be the first thing that you do. You go into R Studio, you navigate to, to the directory where you have your files that you want to work on, and then you will set that as your working directory. The importance of that step is that later on, when we refer to some files in our R script, it's going to look in whatever is the working directory. And if you don't set your working directory, then uh, R might not find the files that you want. So we'll just do that. You'll notice down in this console window, something came up when we did that. And what it said is set wd, that's the command, set working directory, to whatever directory that you just navigated to. In this case, it's in my Dropbox associated with this subject, and it's video number one. And that working directory is in display here in the console as well. Okay, so it's telling you uh, where it's now looking for files. You can click on some of these files and you can see what's in them. So if we click on this chalk versus nobels.csv, it will open it over here and you can take a look at it. And you can see that all of that data that was in the spreadsheet is now displayed on the screen, but not in a very readable form. So this is the form of a CSV, comma, separated values. Okay? And what you can see is that we have each of the cells of that spreadsheet are now separated by commas, as the name of this file would suggest. So you don't want to spend too much time reading a CSV file. It's obviously very difficult to read. But the point is that uh, R can read a comma separated values file very easily. So let's do that. We're going to go to file and we're going to create a new file and the file is going to be an R script. So an R script is just a file that contains the R commands that we want to execute. And it comes up looking like that. It's an untitled. Um, an untitled window to, to begin with. Now, we don't need to do very much here. All we're going to do is to show how to read that data into, uh, into the R environment. 
our command is going to look like this. We're going to, I'll, I'll type in the command and explain bits and pieces as we go. In R we have an object. R has lots of objects, a bit like eViews does. eViews has objects in work files, right? So R also has objects, and one object is a data frame. And a data frame is an object that contains data, as you might have guessed. And what we want to do is to create this data frame from the data that's in the CSV file. So there is a command called read.csv that reads from CSV file, as you might have guessed. Uh, you'll see in R Studio when you type in these commands, a window then pops up with some options, some advice on what you might type next. In this case, the first thing that you're going to want to type is the file name. See here, it's uh, saying that put in the file name first. And that's all that we need to do. So we're going to put in the file name, which is simply uh, choc versus novels.csv. And that's it. Um, the rest of the stuff we can leave. That will all work. All right, let's save that. And because we set our working directory, it's going to automatically save it into the same directory. So let's just call that a, a chocolate script. There we go, dot .r. Dot .r is the extension for R scripts automatically. Um, and then we're just going to click on source. And that will run the command that's in, so far it's only one command, the command that's in our script file. Now when we did that, it appears as though not much has happened. Okay, Down here in the console, this source command has been issued along with the file name that we just created, but you can't see anything else. So what's happened? We'll come across the environment now. In the environment, we now have something. We have some data, which is this data frame. Okay, This data frame called choc underscore df. That was my choice. This name that was typed here was something that I chose. You can call that anything you like. Okay, that's not a command, that's completely up to you. So that's just chocolate underscore df for data frame. Um, and you can open that just by clicking there and it gives you a quick overview of what's in that data file. It gives you the variable names, the country, and then it tells you the chocolate per capita population. Those variable names that we saw in the spreadsheet have all come up here. Uh, now it's always a good idea when you first read your data into R just to make sure it looks like what you think it should look like. Um, an easy way to do that is just to click here, okay? And that will display the data frame for you on the screen like that in a form that is now nice and readable. Much better than looking at a CSV file, isn't it? You can make sense of that. And you should check, this is a nice small data frame, so it's very easy to check that the data that we have here does indeed look just like the data that we started with. Okay, we have the countries, we have the chocolate per capita read incorrectly, population read incorrectly, Nobel's read incorrectly, and so on. Okay, so uh, a common source of error in data analysis is something going wrong at this very first stage where you have your data file set up and for some reason or other it doesn't read in properly and the variable names get lost or, the, or the, um, the numbers don't come in correctly or some such thing. So first step that you should always do when you're reading in your data is just take a look at it somehow or other and make sure that it has come in correctly, which in this case, thankfully, it has. Okay, so what we'll look at in the next video is some actual analysis of these, uh, of these numbers.